Hi guys, Rob from Royal Balls. Today we're going to start moving a couple of the snakes over into the new snake rack. I revamped the whole snake room last week and brought the new rack in here. Um, shuffled everything around and it was feeding day on Friday and all the snakes uh, ate on Friday so there were no issues there even though we did the revamp. So today I'm going to just take a couple of the snakes, uh, my Borneo short tails, and move them across into the new rack system. But before we do that, um, business as usual here. I have a, um, a female uh, ball python who's due to lay eggs. She's actually on day 35 uh, after her pre-lay shed. She laid last year after 34 days. Um, so we'll just take a quick peek in the tub and see whether she's actually laying yet. There she is, still curled up at the back. Uh, you can see her spine is showing really uh, prominently now. And I've just put a little sphagnum moss in there, which is a little bit damp, just to give her a little bit of extra humidity to, uh, to encourage her to, to lay her eggs. So she should be laying any day now. We've also got some snakes paired up. Um, these two here were paired up earlier, they were locked and they're still locked now. You can see that's my banana enchi spider uh, male locked up with my cinnamon mojave female. I don't really want to disturb them so we'll close that lid but um, you can see that despite me revamping everything in the snake room uh, last week the snakes don't really care. Uh, they're doing business as usual. I have another pairing here and they were actually locked up yesterday, they're still locked again today. You can see the um, uh, pastel pied locked up to my spinner female, so we'll leave them to get on with it. Now, when I move the snakes across to the new rack, I've chosen the location for the new rack. Um, as I said, it's, it's very, very open, which I like because it gives good ventilation, but I'm a little bit concerned about the clear tubs and too much light penetrating the snakes being nervous so what we're going to do is to move the snakes down into these lower two here which is against the wall um, just to see how we go. Um, I've pre-prepared most of the tubs but I just want to run through my protocol for preparing a tub. I use this uh, reptile safe disinfectant. Normally I would wipe it down, we don't need to here. The first layer that goes in is just plain newspaper and I'll lay it on top of the, the disinfectant there so it does soak up that disinfectant. And this is my absorbent layer. The next layer that goes on is, um, this is actually IKEA wrapping paper and it comes in a roll like this and I can use it just roll it out and I'm still guessing as to how much I need for these new tubs. It's going to be a little bit much. Just tear it in there and lay that, that's a good guess, lay that out on the tub like that, all my snakes here, other than the ones that are breeding and some of the colubrids have no bedding, we just use straight paper, it's clean, it's absorbent, so that's it, simple as that, the tub is already prepared and we can stick it back in. If I get the right end, that's the window end, so that's the front. So that just slides in there. And I did buy some larger bowls for these new tubs. Again, these are ceramic bowls. Um, they stay slightly cooler than ambient, especially when you see the tubs are ventilated at the front. So it's the front half that's ventilated. So I'm going to put the water bowl at the front of the tub directly underneath the ventilation so that evaporation can actually help to cool the tub, uh, the, the water bowl. So the snakes can actually wrap their water bowl if they need to and the far end of the tub there is, is more secure. And this will be, let's just pull that out so that we can actually compare the size of the tub that they're in now and the size of the tub that they're going into. Let me just um, use some hand sanitizer before we handle the snakes. So I've got a couple of 
Borneo shorttails, which are about 18 months, two years old, and they are outgrowing their tubs. So let's put some water into the water bowl. Oh, nice big water bowl. Um, Borneo shorttails or blood pythons do have a reputation for being um, a little bit um, temperamental. I have two, they're in the bottom two uh, racks here, um, one of which is uh, more difficult to handle than the other. Um, they were fed on Friday so they're not, um, uh, they're not hungry, but um, let me just show you, they do have quite an aggressive feed response, so when we, when we go in to open the tub, we always come from underneath with my hand here, so that when I open the tub, the snake can't actually see my hand because sometimes they'll be right here, especially if they think they're being fed. And if they see a heat signature from your hand as you crack open the tub, they will bite you. If you're not sure, you can also use a snake hook just to pull open the tub if you're a little bit worried. And there she is. These are both females. So, as I said, she has been fed. And you can see she's quite a tight fit there in the, in the tub. So this is going to be a, a nice upgrade. Now, these snakes are um, tropical snakes. Obviously, they're from Southeast Asia. Very thick-bodied snake, very powerful snake. They have a larger head than a ball python, but a much more pointed snout and a much, much thicker uh, body. They're extremely well camouflaged. And they are ambush predators. Again, they're not sprinters. They're not designed to chase after their prey. Very, very fast strike. And she's quite relaxed there, but you can see that her head is coiled back. This is a normal pattern snake. Um, the one that we're going to see in a moment or two is a slightly different colour. So let me just take off the tag. This is the front end of the tub. I'm still getting used to these new tubs. So we put this here. This is going to be a nice little upgrade for her. And you can see she's nervous. She's tense. So we do have to be a little bit careful here. So let me just get her attention. She's hissing. And if I pick her up now. She will bite me if I'm not careful. Okay. These snakes are ground snakes and they feel much, much more secure if you hold their body securely. If I held her up with just one hand she wouldn't feel secure and she would actually try and wriggle and get out of the way. But you can see she's calmed down now. She is huffing a little bit so she's still a little bit nervous. But she is handleable. And you can see what a beautiful, beautiful snake she is. Very thick, powerful body. They will take down quite large prey. And if you look at the scaling pattern here, their skin is a little bit different to, uh, to ball pythons. They have a finer uh, scales. And when they shed, their skin is much, much thinner. Um, much more translucent. And these are swamp dwelling snakes. They do like uh, to live in very humid environments. They're not designed to, uh, to, to go down into uh, rodent burrows or anything. They would, uh, they would find a game trail and curl up next to a game trail. And they would ambush prey. And they'd actually use their size, their bulk, to uh, anchor them in position while they wrestle their prey. Um, so a guy like this is taking, already taking quite big rats. Very pretty animal. So we'll put her into a new tub. See, she's still a little bit nervous. I do have to be a little bit careful here. Okay. So we'll take her. And we'll put her into a new home. We'll see how we go. So that's the first one done. We're going to put the other one. This tub away down here, and we'll clean that out at the moment. Again, this is prepared in exactly the same way. Let's just fill up the water bowl. Oop. 
Sorry, I just had to fill the jug. So we'll put some more water in there. Nice. And this second snake is uh, a much lighter colour, about the same age. And again, very carefully putting my hand underneath so that she doesn't get a heat signature. We'll just check where she is. She's there. This one is a little bit calmer in temperament than the, uh, the earlier one and you can see she's a much lighter uh, colour pattern. This one's quite relaxed so let me take out the water bowl. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful colour pattern, let me just let her know that I'm here. And sh this one is a lot more relaxed than the the other one. There she is. Darker head, but a lighter coloured body. As I said, very, very strong feed response on these guys. And they do have a uh, reputation for being temperamental. But if you learn your animals and you learn how to read them, you can actually handle them. It's just sniffing her environment there. I need to get hold of her body so she's feeling a bit more comfortable. There we go. So if you support their body weight, because they are a very large bodied snake, ground drilling snake, and they don't like to feel insecure off the ground. You can see she can smell her old tub and she just wants to go back into her tub and hide. These have got some growing to do, they will get up to uh, four or five feet and much much thicker than this so they've, they've outgrown their tub here and we'll just slip her into a new tub. You can see she's got much more room to stretch out in this tub here. Come on, girl. There we go. And we'll slide her back into her new position in the rack. There she goes. Beautiful snake. And there we go. She's in a new home. So that's it for today guys, we've moved the first couple of snakes, I'm not going to touch the uh, the other snakes here, I'll just clean out these, these two wrecks, but um, we do have breeding snakes so I don't really want to mess with them too much. As I do move snakes across, uh, I'll empty out these racks here, these can come out and I'll move this big rack here back into uh, this position here so it will close off some of the uh, open space here so make the rack a little bit more comfortable for the, uh, for the snakes. So, um, I'm not sure how sensitive they're going to be, it's always a concern for me, I don't know how much of a concern it's going to be for the snakes, but um, we will shift this back across here. Uh, this rack here has all my breeder females, so I don't actually want to, uh, to move that at this stage, but we will shuffle stuff around and make it look a little bit neater. And the hatchling rack can move back then over here where it previously was. So, All good guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my Borneo short tails. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it definitely means a lot to me. Um, I've had a lot of uh, help and support from the community, fantastic reptile community out there. So thanks very much and we'll see you next time.